Now it's time for Culture Talk, where we talk about culturally relevant topics that you can use to start conversations about your faith. And I'm joined today with astrophysicist Jeff Swearing. Thank you for joining us. Good to be back on the show, Sandra. We're going to be talking about a topic that um, you're actually writing about, which is AI. Um, but a big concern is that um, AI researchers are creating God. What a topic. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it's a... It's one of those where when you think AI, that's got one of those, everybody means the same thing. There's actually different kinds of AI. And so that plays into that idea of are we creating God or are yeah. we just creating cool tools that help us do yeah. things well in our universe? Well, let's talk about those def different definitions. What are the different definitions of AI or the different types of AI? Well, so most people, when they think of AI, they're mm -hmm. thinking of, you know, data off of Star Trek or mm -hmm. R2-D2, C-3PO. Yeah. I think you got Vision in the, in the Marvel yeah. comics, uh -huh. um, where these are sentient beings that can think and make decisions and process. And they're, they're, they're basically creatures like us, although they have a different composition, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the standard definition of AI. That would be in, in the lingo that's used is kind of the artificial general intelligence. But uh, we've also created a lot of things that we use AI. So your, your Siri is an AI, your Google Maps is an AI. These are uh, devices that rather than being programmed to give a specific outcome, they actually analyze what's there. They kind of learn from past experience. So as you choose things, it learns to do things differently. Mm -hmm. And they are what are narrow intelligences. So things that will do what humans can do, but just in a narrow realm. And they really can't take that knowledge and apply it somewhere else, which mm -hmm. is what the general intelligence will do. Right. And then you've got the super intelligence, which is the general intelligence that is just far more intelligent than we are. And that's kind of the God, uh, mm -hmm. God type AI that uh, people are talking about. Can you give some, um, just some insight into some of the promising aspects of AI? Well, what, what AI does is that it's kind of utilizing computers to do things that humans typically do. So, I mean, we use computers for things all the time. They help our cars run efficiently. They monitor the emissions and make adjustments so that our cars run efficiently. Um, you know, your phone in your pocket is a computer. Um, so AI has a lot of capacity like that. It's kind of expanding what computers can do into more and more arenas. Uh, which often those computers learn to do what we can do better than we can do. I mean, you know, if, you know one of the stereotypical examples is chess. Yeah. Granted, now, whether you know how to play chess or not, you know, as we taught AI, or computers how to play chess, eventually they got much better at us than mm -hmm. chess. And so uh, we could actually learn from these computer mm -hmm. programs to actually play chess better. And so uh, this allows things like you could imagine using AIs to look at x-rays and diagnose diseases. Mm -hmm. You could uh, look at AIs to find criminals. You, uh, you know, there's all sorts of things you could use AIs to do to help us do the things that we think are important. Right. to do them better and more efficiently. And so there's, there are, there's a lot of potential out there right. for what AI can do, a lot of promise. Well, it's good that there, there is that promise there mm -hmm. with AI, but the concern is still, it's eventually going to lead to humanity's demise. So how do you begin to um, think about that, particularly as you're engaging someone who's um, you know, skeptical of AI research? Well, so at least when we're talking about these narrow AIs, which is all of the stuff, mm -hmm. all of the AIs that currently exist, and my prediction is probably will exist, are in these narrow intelligences where uh, what defines how they work is the data that we feed into it and what we choose to allow them to do. So you could imagine a car driving down the road. Um, you know, as humans drive, you know, we know we're going to make errors. We have accidents. Sometimes we have fatal accidents. And, and we kind of know how to navigate assigning blame to people or not. Mm -hmm. now, now, what happens if you're, you've got this self-driving car that causes a fatality? Who's to blame? Is it the corporation that built it? Is it the car itself? Is it the person? You know, so there, there's just a lot of uh, places where we're going to tend to give the AI autonomy, mm -hmm. in reality, it's just operating under an algorithm. It doesn't have that sentience to say this is right, this is right. wrong. It's just doing what it's been trained to do. Right. And so that's where I think the peril really lies in AI is that we assume that AIs are going to take the place or be able to make better decisions than humans, mm -hmm. as opposed to having humans have oversight and ultimately being responsible for the decisions. So I'm wondering then how that connects back to the story about the chess playing if ultimately the computers actually got better at playing chess than humans. 
humans couldn't have said, I want you to play chess at this level because it exceeded it at mm -hmm. some point. So could that be the case for um, AI that it will exceed even what the um, creator intended? And so are they then responsible? Or well, well, that's inevitably going to be right. what's going to happen. You know, so in chess, right. like I said, that's a game, not real right. much at stake there. If we allow AIs to now decide um, who gets executed or you know, who gets penalized, who, you know, criminal, to, to play judge, if you will, right. um, we're now ceding authority that I would argue God has given to humans. We're mm -hmm. ceding that to computers, mm -hmm. even though on efficiency wise or some other reason to make better decisions, mm -hmm. we're now ceding that control to something that doesn't have a capacity to say this is good, bad or other. Because a lot of times these AIs that we develop, they ultimately develop the same biases that humans have. They will uh, misclassify people in Congress as criminals because Facial recognition doesn't work. They do that. Uh, there's there's racial issues that show up because it's harder to distinguish or to get good readings from a, just a physical perspective on different skin types. And so there are all of these things that go in to that. The AI isn't stepping back and saying, wait a second, it's wrong that one person is treated differently than mm -hmm. the other. That's something a human knows how to do because only the human has that moral component to it. Mm -hmm. So for Christians who are wanting to make sure that they're, they're informed and that they're able to provide insightful responses to, or even engage in those conversations concerning AI, what tips do you have? Well, I mean, you know, what I like to do as I'm thinking about that mm -hmm. is to ask the question, how could this be used well? Mm -hmm. But also ask the question, how could this be used poorly? So, mm -hmm. I mean, my kids have all learned how to drive. I did not let them have the car when they were five years old, because they were go they would in they'd cause problems if right. they did that. That would be <laughs> negligent on my part to do right. that. But I prepared my kids, I taught them, I trained them. Um, the car is neither good nor bad. I can choose to use it in a good or a bad way. And so that's really the question I ask when I'm confronting a technology like AI or really anything. Mm -hmm. It's like, where can we use that? Where can we use this to help humanity? And we also have to be aware of where could this harm humanity? And if we only focus on the how can it help without thinking about the how can it harm, mm -hmm. we're going to do a lot of harm and we're going to, that, that's ultimately we're responsible for that. So mm -hmm. ask the question, what are the good that can come out of this? Mm -hmm. But be aware of what are the bad and then ask the question, how do we make a wise decision so that we're using it to do the good and mitigate the harm? Right. Yeah, definitely lots to think about. And I'm excited for your book to come out. It's not going to be coming out until 2022. That is correct. But um, it will be a good book. In the meantime, if you would like to hear more from Jeff Swearing, go to reasons.org and search for his blog, Impact Events.